Welcome back everybody. It's been a while since I uh, posted a trapping video, but we've got some content and I got some trapping videos coming your way. But first, I need to uh, tell you about this archery arm guard by OTW. This video is brought to you by this company. And uh, if you guys are interested in actually picking one of these things up, you can get it half off in the link in the description below. So this thing's originally 16 bucks on Amazon and uh, you'll be able to get it for eight dollars so 50 percent off which is awesome and uh, i'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, win this as well on my channel all you have to do is like the video and comment in the comment section below and i'll do a drawing on the next trapping video and whoever wins a drawing i'll send this out to them with some kill them outdoor stickers and stuff but i'll show you the arm guard itself quick Obviously these things work really good for uh, shooting a recurve. If you have uh, a recurve that likes to smack your arm or if you're hunting and uh, like late season bow hunting and you have a lot of bulky clothes on and you wanna make sure those clothes are pinned up against your arm so they're not gonna interfere with your strength. But it's super lightweight and uh, has breathing holes in the backside of it so your arm can breathe, it's not gonna get all sweaty and sticky and is uh, totally adjustable. So it's a really nice arm guard, and uh, if you guys are interested in it, uh, just like the video, put a comment in the comment section below, and I'll uh, pick a winner on the next video. And if you're unfortunate and you don't win, you can uh, get them half off in the link in the description below. So appreciate everybody watching. Let's check out the trap line. Welcome back, everybody. I'm going to give you a little trapping update. I've uh, I pulled all my all my traps about a week and three or four days ago and we got all that snow. I pulled it right before we got that snow. And uh, right now I've got a few new MV550s that I gotta get uh, modified up for how I like it. So we're gonna go over to my grandpa grandpa's house and we're gonna do some welding and get those traps ready. I'm gonna bring them all back. I'm gonna reboil all my traps. Uh, I don't know if it's really necessary, but some guys reboil after every single catch they make. I've never done that, but I have noticed on the trail cam footage of uh, critters coming up to my sets, they seem to be very wary, and I don't know if it's because they smell that scent from the other critter on the trap or not. So just to be safe, I'm going to reboil everything, and we're going to get those traps back out, and we're going to set some beaver traps too. So we got some trapping coming up, but we got to prep all the traps first, so that's what we're going to work on today. Traps in here boiling. I don't know what a lot of you guys boil your, tra your traps in, but uh, I got some dark walnut bark here that my grandpa got me, and uh, I've heard that. A lot of old timers used to boil their traps in this stuff, so we're gonna cut that up a little bit and stick that in there with it. Thanks, Grandpa.
Okay, so the first trap we're gonna set today is a little weasel trap. Uh, last time I trapped a weasel, I think I was 13 or 14 years old, so I'm pretty excited to get to uh, try it again. We, I made these little weasel boxes in shop class in school when I was younger, and uh, all you do is I have a chunk of beaver meat in the back, and I'm gonna set this trap right here in the front of that hole, and then close it up like that. And the weasel, the reason I'm setting it here is because there's weasel tracks all over this uh, brush pile. You can see that right there is a weasel track. You have the two a hopping track with a tail in between. That's a weasel track. And there's a whole bunch of them over here going in and out of this pile of stuff. So we're going to tuck that box up in there and set that trap. I'll show you once it's done. Okay, so that's literally how that trap is set right there. As soon as the weasel pops through that hole, it'll step on that pan and that's a super light trigger on that little victor there. And uh, we're gonna close this up and we're gonna tuck it back in there and blend it in. Okay, there's our finished weasel, tra weasel trap. Right there it is. Just blend it in with everything and Hopefully that nails a weasel, and if you come right over here, we've got another weasel trap set. See all these weasel tracks right here in the snow? Coming from out of this, old, under this old box thing that's all rotten. So I put that uh, little box cubby set right there, and that little Victor is right inside that hole right there. With a little beaver meat in the back of that box. So we'll see. Okay everybody, I'm down here in the deep swamp and uh, this is my favorite time to get down here because we've got cold enough weather this ice is thick enough to hold me and otherwise this is just a nightmare trying to, trying to walk through here, let alone carrying a bunch of traps. So it's easy right now, I can just hop on the main channel down here and walk right up the creek on this ice. There are a few dangerous spots where the runs are, but I know my way around the swamp pretty good. I've been doing it for years, so. I got three beaver sets set over here on uh, some main runs, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few sets, a few beaver, a few more beaver traps I'm gonna set down a little bit farther, but I don't wanna show you everything, otherwise this video would be an hour long of just setting traps, so. And you guys don't really care about watching me set traps. You want to see what comes out of them. So uh, that's the exciting part, and that'll be on the next video. So you'll want to tune in for that when I come check all of them. But let's go set a few beaver traps. Okay, I figured I'd share this with everybody. So this is all flooded down in here, and there's numerous beaver runs up through here. If you look right here, there's... A, a run up through here that the beaver have not been using at all, but look at all the fox and coyote tracks going up through here on the ice. And then if you come over here, you can see where the ice really darkens. It means the ice got th uh, kind of thin right here. And if you look under the ice, right down here, do you see the bubbles in there? That right there shows you that there's critters running that run. Most likely a beaver or multiple beaver that are on that are using this run right here. They're uh, letting bubbles come up and it's getting trapped under the ice. So that's one way when there's thick ice like this that you can tell beaver runs that beavers are actually using. But look, I can't get over all the fox and coyotes that are running these as well. It kind of I wish that you were able to use cable restraints or uh, snares in New York because. There's so many spots down in here that just be killer, killer spots. I mean, if you hooked up a cable restraint right there where that run narrows down, right where all them fox and coyote are, are going through right there, it'd be an awesome location. And But unfortunately here in New York State, you're not allowed to uh, do that. Lucky for the fox and coyotes down in this swamp. But, oh, another thing I was gonna mention, on a lot of my videos, I always get people commenting asking what the heck I'm doing with my trigger on my 330 here. In New York State, you're not allowed a double prong uh, trigger. So you have to either cut one of those off or twirl it up or 
connect them it has to be one and when i set it it's got to be all the way over here offset it's got to be six and a half inches from the trigger to the edge of the trap so you're when i set it it'll be set like that that way you're you're gonna miss the non-target critters like otters muskrat mink even though i still catch uh muskrat and i've even caught mink with a setup just like this one of my biggest complaints with this rule in new york state is uh it promotes terrible catches in your 330s i mean if you're gonna if a kit beaver a smaller beaver goes through here almost always you get them right by the hip or the back legs which is you know not a good not really promoting uh trapping very good that you know obviously the critter would be in there alive for a really long time and die kind of a miserable death by by uh, being caught by its back legs so that's one of the things i have against it but i understand why uh why the rules are the way they are i just wish that uh you know if this is a double prong right in the middle you're gonna head catch a lot of the beavers that come through there but with it like offset like that you make a lot of bad catches on them so you really have to have your trap anchored good because a lot of times i've even come and they've been alive in there and they're not happy so we're gonna probably go up this run a little bit and find a spot where it really pinches down short and we're gonna set this trap this was a video of a coyote that was uh hitting one of my scent post sets i had a little fox urine on that uh stick that's coming off that rock that i pulled out of the food plot right there it was on one of my gator paths and i see where coyote and fox should run that path quite often and these fox and coyote are super wary so i tried a scent post right there and it worked perfect and that coyote was literally just an inch from stepping on my pan and my trap there but what i'm nervous about now is my trail cameras if you notice that coyote locked right on that trail camera when it started taking video and i think that's what deterred it from working the set even more so i'm kind of gun shy now to even use trail cameras on my coyote and fox sets but i just uh i know it's infrared light and you can't actually see it but somehow i really truly think that coyote saw that light or that trail camera taking video somehow even though it's ir video i'd like to know what you guys think in the comment section below do you think that coyote saw that video that uh, trail camera and that's what you know spooked him from that set or or what do you guys think but anyways i think i'm gonna venture away from using trail cameras on those sets as much as i normally do but i appreciate everybody watching this video and uh, i'll have another video Checking the trap line very shortly. Thanks, everybody.